we're looking at these strange characters in the scriptures and this next strange character is the giant egyptian in first chronicles 11 22 through 23 you got a great story and a great character that you hardly ever hear anybody talk about and it's first chronicles 11 22 through 23 where it says, And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzil, who had done many acts. He had done many acts. And it would be cool just to, for the Lord to sit you down, put you in front of a big screen, and let you see all these mighty acts that his people had done throughout the Bible that maybe not even wrote down in the Bible. But it says, He slew two lion-like men of Moab. So there was his first big thing that he did. He also went down and slew a lion in a, in a, in a pit in a snowy day. Now you just imagine taking on two lion-like men and then going down and killing an actual lion in a pit on a snowy day. And you know, they say lions are good in snow. So a man trying to fight a lion in snow... That's rough. And then it says, And he slew an Egyptian, a man of great stature, five cubits high, and in the Egyptian's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam. And he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. <clears throat> now that's a cool story. That's something for a movie right there. But yet you don't hear anything about it. So this giant Egyptian... Now remember, if you've listened to me a while, I've showed you how Egypt pictures the world. So what this can picture is you getting up every day, just like the last character we talked about, where it says, and yet again, there was war. So every day, you're getting up, and yet again, here's this giant in your face. He's strange. He's unusual. Maybe six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot like the last one we talked about. Or maybe it's two lion-like men. You don't know how you're going to get around them. Or maybe it's this big Egyptian, a man of great stature. And he's five cubits high. So he's, you got to think if a cubit is 18 inches, he's five cubits high, then he's almost about eight foot tall and you're looking up at him and in the Egyptian's hand is a spear like a weaver's beam which a weaver's beam is is huge you know I, I looked it up like two and a half inches thick and over five way well, well over five foot long and he's got that in his hand so not only is he massive but he's got this thing in his hand that he's going to smack you upside your head with but the thing is don't look don't look or worry about what's in the egyptian sand don't be intimidated by what the worldly enemy that you face has in his possession just like it says in proverbs twenty three seventeen, let not thine heart envy sinners but be thou in the fear of the lord all the day long you know you could look at the things that the world has and you you want them you're intimidated by them. You think that they're better than you because they have them. You think you're there, you're less of a person because you don't have it. All that stuff that they have is of the world. It's temporal. And the weapons of your warfare aren't carnal. The things that you want, that you should want and desire are spiritual things, things that are eternal, things that aren't temporal. All they got is temporary stuff that's just going to get burned up in a fire when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back to get us. Or, to, or when he comes back with us, actually, at the second coming. So he's going to come back and get us at the rapture. We're going to go up at the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to get things that are eternal. And we're going to come right back down. And the Lord's going to burn all these things down here that are temporal. So don't envy what's in the Egyptian's hand. Even though it looks handy, 
It looks nice. It can be intimidating. It's just a temporal thing. Anything that he can sling at you or swing at you or throw at you is a temporal thing that's only going to cause temporal pain. And just like the Lord said, you know, don't fear him that can just kill the body and after that has nothing he can do, but rather fear him who is able to cast both soul and body in hell. Fear the Lord. You know, let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. So this giant Egyptian, his spear was like a weaver's beam. And Beniah went down to him with a staff. He went down to him. Notice that phrase. Like I said, just look at every phrase, every few words coupled together and see what you come up with. And when, it, when, when I seen that phrase, went down to him, that jumped off the page to me. And it reminds me of how everything that you face down here is under the Lord's feet. And if it's under the Lord's feet, it's under your feet. Because Ephesians 2, 6 says, If you're saved, you're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And 1 Corinthians 15, 27 says, Everything down here is under his feet. So when you face an obstacle, a giant, or whatever it is down here, you're going down to it. You're going down to it to take care of it. It may He may look like a giant, and he may be way above the ground, but he's under your feet. If you're in Christ, you're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and everything is under his feet. But Benaiah goes down to him with a staff. Your staff is your support, your defense, and your offense. And that's the Lord himself through the word is your staff. No matter what you face, it's your support. When you need support, when you need encouragement, when you need comfort, when you need instructions, it's your support. When you need defense, when somebody throws something your way that's not true and they're hitting you over the head with it, maybe it's big as a weaver's beam, you got a defense, the word. You just hold the word up. When it's time to attack, it's your offense. It gives you the bullets, the ammo, the whatever you want to call it, to attack. It's your support, your defense, it's your offense, it's your staff. So he goes down to him with a staff, and he plucks the spear out of the Egyptian's hand. You see, the Lord takes away what the enemy uses to hurt you just like he did with death you know what he did when he was when the lord jesus christ was in the heart of the earth he went down there and he got a hold of death and he took his keys and now that he's risen again he says oh death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So he takes away what the enemy has that can hurt you. He went after death. He took his keys. He took his stinger out. And then he allowed Benaiah to go down to this man of great stature, this giant Egyptian, and pluck the spear right out of his hand and then kill him with his own spear. Just like with the Lord. You know what's going to happen to death? Death is going to eternal death. The lake of fire. He's going to beat death at his own game. He's going to put death and eternal death in the lake of fire. Just like it says there in Revelation, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. You see, you think that these giants, these strange, unusual characters you face in your life is something that nobody else is facing and only you, but you have the Lord Jesus Christ in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, and he's going er through everything with you. 
So Benaiah went down to him with a staff, plucked the spear right out of his hand, and kills him with his own spear. That's a really cool story. That's a story not many people know about. And that's a story just a couple verses there. You can get great encouragement from. And just live on that throughout the day. Just go th live on that throughout the day. You face your thorn in the flesh. You face your giant at work or at school. Just be reminded of this story. This giant you're facing, you're going down to him. He's under your feet. You're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You got a staff, the word of God, your support, your defense, your offense. The Lord can pluck the spear, pluck the weapon right out of the enemy's hand and make them not even the slightest bit of a threat anymore. So even if he's five cubits high with a weaver's beam bigger than your body and he's got something huge in his hand that's intimidating that would be nice to have that he would like to whack you upside the head with remember everything that he got that he's got is a temporal thing that can cause only temporal problems temporal pain but everything that the lord's got is eternal and lasts forever 